Hello, this is Alex of Embertone. I am so excited to present to you today Leonid Bass, a super detailed and rich orchestral bass. Um, we recorded a gazillion samples. We, were, we spent an unbelievable amount of time organizing them and giving you the utmost in control. So before I start blabbing on, I'm just going to jump right in and play it a little bit for you. So the purpose of this demo, I think, would just be to go through all the controls to show you how this thing works. It's an incredibly deep instrument because we've been working on solo strings now for more than three years. And so each release of intimate strings, the solo versions, have been just building on each other. So in many ways, Leonid Bass is the culmination of a lot of research, a lot of work. Um, so yeah, let's jump in. So what you heard already is sustain mode. You heard lots of legato transitions, slurs, portamentos, bow change with d lots of dynamic control. Um, let's listen to the staccatos a little bit. When you're in staccato mode, you can change the length of the staccato using the dynamic CC. So, short. Pizzicato. We have lots of dynamic layers and Bartok slap pits as well. We mic'd uh, Lenny so carefully, and I think what we achieved is a really detailed sound. We avoided the boominess that you could definitely get with uh, such a monstrous instrument. Um, so there's a lot of clarity, there's a lot of richness, but the mic positions were really carefully chosen to make sure you, you didn't get um, frequencies and, and things that you don't want. Mm -hmm. 
Let's listen to Tremolo. So pant. Those are the main articulations. Notice here that you have sordino. So let's listen to that. have sulpant and harmonics. So sulpant has that beautiful scratchy sound. That's the bass player playing really close to the bridge. And then we have harmonics. And then when you go into color mode, you could blend harmonics and solpont. you can switch between that warm harmonic sound, which is really played when the bass player has certain nodes on the string. So um, in other instruments, it was sul pont and sul tasto that you were blending between, but sul tasto didn't work quite as well with the bass. So we still wanted to offer lots of color control. Uh, so instead, you're blending between harmonics and sul pont, because uh, we felt color-wise, that was a pretty good uh, comparison to sul tasto. So listen to the tone control that you have here. So you have that vertical control of color, and then you have the horizontal control of dynamics, which is controlled in CC11. Such a huge and diverse range of color opportunities here. Um, it's kind of infinite, uh, just being able to blend dynamics and bow position at the same time. So that covers a lot of the controls on the front page. Uh, there's round robin, borrowed round robin that we have. So if you want to do a repeated line, uses neighboring samples to create the ability to avoid that effect, the kind of the machine gun effect of you're, you're hearing the same sample over and over again. Um, there's reverb control. So if you want to use your own reverb, you could turn it off and you have a bone dry sound.
turn color mode on without reverb. Just so you can hear how seamless it is. If you don't want legato transitions and you want to be able to play lots of notes at the same time, then hit poly, hit the poly button, you could play chords. Let's turn the reverb back on a little bit. Which is extremely helpful when you're in ensemble mode. Have your own Leonid bass ensemble. You can even do it with legato transitions on. So you could hear all those beautiful colors uh, when you're in color mode. That applies in ensemble mode too. Keep in mind when you're in ensemble mode that you're using tons of voices. And then when you're in ensemble mode and color mode, you're using even more. So check out the voice count up here when I'm playing a line. Here, move the mouse. You're easily using 200 voices. So just be aware of that. Um, ensemble mode is a pretty intense CPU monster. Um, so what else do we have here? Let's look around. There are some new controls in the Leonid Bass that I can highlight. Um, there's a dynamic range dial. So when dynamic range is set to nothing, all you hear between the dynamics is the timbral change. You don't hear any volume difference. When you start moving this dynamic range dial up, you'll hear as, you, as the timbre gets Softer, so does the volume. So you could set that to have whatever you'd like. And then you have a lot of the other controls uh, available in all the other instruments. I'm not going to go through every one just to be able to save time, but I can mention that um, responsiveness is a helpful one. Some users don't like the lag that you get when you're playing real uh, transitions. So it makes it snappier. What you're doing is you're moving the start time to the right. So every sample is now, ha it has a, a more aggressive start time, you'll notice you can't hear that beautiful bow sound as much when you make responsiveness too high. So set that to, um, to what you're most comfortable with. Uh, for me, I'd rather have as much lag and as much smooth legato sound as possible. Um, yeah, so what we're going to be doing is we're going to start a series of videos that cover all the instruments because now we have four and the Intimate Strings solo series is complete. We have the violin, the cello, the viola, and the bass. Um, so there's going to be a series of videos that cover smaller concepts and uh, in little bite-sized chunks. Uh, so look out for that. In the meantime, I hope you enjoyed this. Thanks for watching.